Clayton Thomas Mueller with 350.org. I'm here in the Bakken Oil Formation, which is located here in the traditional territory of the Mandan, Hirikara, and Hidatsu, uh, known as the three affiliated tribes of Fort Berthold. Uh, I've been here as part of the Extreme Energy Summit, the fifth of its kind. The last one took place in the Gulf Coast of Mexico in Alabama. And the Extreme Energy Summit brings together uh, you know, dozens and dozens of frontline community leaders uh, to you know, talk about intersectionality and ways that we can work together in solidarity fighting against extreme energy on the front lines. Here in North Dakota, of course, you know, we see behind me this massive fracking uh, drill rig. And across the landscape here, which is incredibly beautiful, it's like Badlands, um, we've seen I guess in the last 10 years, just an explosion of, uh, of uh, oil and gas development using this controversial fracking technology, which of course destroys underground water resources and surface water resources. You know, we heard from Indigenous Environmental Network's Candy Mawson about the horrific socioeconomic impacts that the tens of thousands of workers from all over the planet that have come here for jobs uh, in North Dakota's Bakken oil boom uh, have created on local native people. Um, you know, the man camps are a big, big issue um, where native women are exploited, where the drug trade is disproportionately impacting uh, native families, and just uh, an ongoing, uh, ever expanding list of socioeconomic disruption caused by uh, predominantly male, non-native workers coming into the region in search of, uh, of, a, of a black gold rush, if you will, of uh, Bakken oil boom jobs. Behind me, you can see the collector stations and compression stations as well. These rigs are littered all over the territory of the Mandan, Harikara, uh, and Hidatsu. We did a toxic tour just the other day at the beginning of uh, the Extreme Energy Summit and got to see firsthand just how fractured the landscape is by corporations like Hess, who owns the drilling rig behind me. Um, We've all got a fundamental moral obligation to take on the extreme energy sector, to put a stop to the expansion of the fossil fuel regime here in North Dakota. For years, I've been calling this place Tar Sands South because of the scope and scale of the operations taking place in the Bakken. And of course, under Obama's everything under the sun energy policy, it's allowed for um, an, an undeterred growth here in North Dakota of this industry. And you know, water is a treaty right, of course, to the local indigenous peoples. Um, you know, hunting and uh, 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 sustaining life ways through culture and connection to the sacredness of earth are all treaty rights um, that are being violated by the growth of the fracking industry here in North Dakota, in this, in this territory. And you know, these are fundamental human rights that are being violated. And uh, I mean, even just the truck traffic on the tribal reservation roads has resulted in the deaths of dozens of local citizens, including children who were driven off the road by, you know, truck drivers who clipped them or were too tired or, you know, the, the excuses go on and on. And it's been horrific for tribal members because of the jurisdictional issues between the courts of North Dakota, tribal courts and tribal police. Um, you know, so there hasn't been persecution, prosecution of people responsible, um, you know, for the for the impacts um, and the violence that ensues from this kind of mega development on local communities. And in this case, it's the local indigenous community that's been impacted disproportionately. You know, whether it's the North Slope of Alaska or in Athabasca in Northern Alberta or in Southern Alberta where there's a, our own fracking boom happening on the Blood Indian Reservation or here in North Dakota, extreme energy development represents the oil sector's last uh, gasping breaths and the screaming of the barrel. Um, you know, we have the economic arguments, we have the technology, we have the will. here to stand in solidarity uh, as 350.org um, you know and all of the coalition partners that come together for the extreme energy summit to shine a light on these these greenhouse gangsters these corporate
criminals, um, you know, who are responsible for the deaths of innocent people and thousands and thousands of beings of life that, you know, we have a sacred duty to speak on behalf of because they cannot speak for themselves.